Hi there, welcome to Evening Prayer. This is our chance to pause at the end of this day and to offer God everything that has been our, our worries, our troubles, um, all our scattered thoughts. And it's also our chance to make ourselves deliberately aware of God's presence with us, God's presence that has been with us all throughout today, maybe unacknowledged. Now is the time we're going to acknowledge it, uh, enjoy it, revel in it. And we're going to indicate to ourselves that presence of God in two ways. First of all, we're going to still ourselves. And that means that whether it's you know noisy or quiet where we are, we're going to have a stillness of heart, deliberately calm our thoughts. And the second thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to light this candle as a, a visual reminder of God's presence with us. So as I do those two things, maybe you'd like to join in. Let's be still. And just become aware of your breathing. Is it fast or slow? Is it shallow or deep? And just as we make ourselves aware that we are safe in God's presence, maybe you'd like to deliberately breathe more deeply and more slowly. The tensions of the day build up in our bodies. So can you lower your shoulders? Acknowledging that we are safe in God's presence, we can let those, those tensions go. No. We light this candle as a reminder of Christ's presence with us. And Lord, we just thank you for the gift of your presence. Your presence which never leaves us day or night. Lord, there's not a moment of today when we've been alone. But Lord, in this moment, we want to acknowledge you, make ourselves aware of you. And so, God, we offer you all our scattered thoughts, all those worries and niggles and uh, unfinished thought processes that have come today. God, we give them to you. Knowing that you hold our lives in your hands. Lord, we thank you for that scripture that says when we draw near to God, God draws near to us. Lord, help us to enjoy a peaceful time of closeness with you. Amen. We're reading Psalm 42 tonight, so if you've not already done so, uh, open up your copy of the Psalms uh, on your Bible app or um, your uh, paper copy. And Psalm 42 uh, is quite similar to a lot of the Psalms we've been reading lately in that it's a Psalm uh, crying out for help and a Psalm thinking about the hope that God gives. But there's something uh, slightly different which is emphasised in this psalm. It's there in the others, but it really comes to the fore here. Um, often, uh, particularly in David's psalms that we've been reading lately, um, David is crying out to God about circumstances and essentially saying, God, I know you're good. You've rescued me before. Come again and fix my circumstances. 
uh, how often have we prayed that? Sometimes that's all our prayer life is like, isn't it? Just God, come and fix this, fix this mess for me, God. Um, there's a lot of that in this psalm. Psalm 42 has a lot of that. Um, it's a psalm of a troubled heart. But the solution that this psalmist, this songwriter looks for is not particularly for God to come in uh, and rearrange circumstances so that uh, the psalmist's on top again. This psalmist seeks, well, listen to this, <laughs> the opening lyrics, familiar, because they appear in lots of hymns and songs. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God. So this psalmist recognises that the answer to the problem is not for God to reach in and sort out circumstances. The answer to the problem is God. The answer to the problem is relationship with God. The answer to the problem is closeness with God. Man, I need this message so much. I need uh, I need to be reminded as I go about my day and, I, and there's I, just loads going on and um, I'm, I'm firing up little little prayers through the day. God, can you give me enough energy to get through this next thing? God, can you give me uh, what I need to be able to uh, to have this conversation or complete this task? Um, and sometimes if I get time, God, when's this going to let up? When, when is this, this stressful period going to be a bit more restful? Or, or when are these troubles going to actually be over? Um, this psalm reminds me to look up, to lift my eyes and to say, God, actually, the thing I'm hungry for, the thing I'm thirsty for, the thing that's going to answer these problems, the thing that's going to fill this gap, it's not just the circumstances getting better. The thing that I really need is you. The thing that I really need is time with you, intimacy with you. Because remember, that's what we're made for. Uh, that's where we're all going. Uh, that's when we as human beings are most alive. Um, when we're enjoying being in God's presence, maybe in a time like this, maybe in a time with scripture, maybe in a time of quietness, maybe uh, when you climb into bed at night, and feel warm and safe. Uh, maybe when you're walking out in nature and you can appreciate um, the work of the creator. Wherever it is, those places where you can enjoy intimacy with God. So as we read this, as, as I uh, pray through this psalm, um, that's what I'm going to be praying, that God would, would lift my eyes um, and that, yeah, it's, it's, great it's great to pray to god about circumstances that need god's help uh the psalms are full of that but let's not lose sight of the the real goal our ultimate goal ultimate desire is intimacy with god so let's pray together as the deer pants for streams of water so my soul pants for you, God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Midar. Deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I 
I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. So Lord, as we pray through this this psalm, we just thank you for these words. We thank you for the um, the emotions, the thoughts, the, the state of being that the, that these songwriters have put into words, and that they still uh, feed our souls today. They still allow our souls to speak, Lord. God, they put in mind for me um, <clears throat> those who look back in a joyful time in their faith when they enjoy time in your presence. Um, uh, so, so these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of the Lord with shouts of joy and praise. And God, maybe people look back in a time of, of their faith, in a time in their life that was full of joy uh, and a sense of closeness to you. And Lord, they've lost that uh, for whatever reason. And God, we want to lift those people up to you, Lord, uh, whether that's us today or whether that's people we know. Lord, I want to pray that they find this psalm. I want to pray that those people will find themselves opening up Psalm 42, uh, and be able to express to you what maybe they felt they couldn't admit to themselves or say out loud to you, God, but they can say it to you now, that they miss those times of closeness with you, that that's not how things are anymore, that stuff's got in the way. And Lord, I pray you speak to them spirit to spirit. In the roar of your waterfall, Lord, Deep calls to deep. Start to speak to their hearts, Lord, and soften their hearts so that they can bring themselves to say, I will yet praise him. And Lord, this is also a psalm for those whose hearts are troubled, whose spirits are downcast. So Lord, we pray for uh, for anyone that we know for whom that's true today. Lord, may, we don't know what's going on in all our friends' lives or hearts, Lord. We don't know who's suffering with anxiety or depression or, or loneliness or just in their spirits or brought low. God, we're all very good at telling one another we're fine and sometimes we're not. So God, thank you that you see every heart. And Lord, want to pray for those people whose, whose hearts are disturbed, whose spirits are downcast. Lord, that as they go to rest tonight, as they go to sleep tonight, and as they walk around their day tomorrow, Lord, that they would have that sense of your deep calling to their deep, the deep, deep places of their spirit, the places they can't even put into words. Lord, in the roar of your waterfalls, all the waves and breakers have swept over me. God, would they just have a sense of your love, your compassion, uh, just sweeping over them, Lord. Washing away their troubles. Feelings of unworthiness, feelings of um, dirtiness, feelings of failure. Feelings that life's not worth living. Lord, may they experience just a, a, a torrent of your love in their hearts, in their minds, from friends and family. Lord, surround them. And finally, Lord, we want to pray for ourselves. Lord, as we've come to you night after night, time after time, seeking uh, solutions, for our trouble, seeking that you would come and be at work in our circumstances. Lord, above all, may we seek you. Lord, as you give us a, as we have an, a natural hunger for our own circumstances to be better, you give us a greater hunger for you. 
God, as we have a God-given hunger and thirst for, uh, for others and for others' lives, God, would you give us a greater hunger and thirst for you. Lord, as we have a God-given hunger and thirst for righteousness and for justice, God, would you give us a stronger hunger and thirst after you. And Lord, I want to pray that you would teach us how to spend time in your presence in hundreds of different ways. Lord, not just the, uh, the ways that we're used to, not just the ways that we've been taught, um, not just, uh, Lord, ways that sometimes become a bit stale and a bit boring. Lord, there are hundreds of ways to enjoy your presence as we become aware that we live life in your presence and in your love. So Lord, give us moments uh, tonight, tomorrow and the day after where we just catch ourselves realising that, that some goodness is a blessing from you. Uh, as we read scripture, Lord, that it reveals us something about your heart. Lord, that um, we won't just be people who praise you for what you've done for us, but we'll be people who love you and adore you for who you are, God. Lord, we pray these things. In Jesus' name. Um, and I encourage you uh, just to stay in this place of prayer. Uh, we're not going to finish with our usual words tonight because um, they are a prayer for God to come and do something for us. Uh, and while that's good and proper and uh, an amazing thing to pray, I um, just want to stay in this place of actually worshipping God for who God is. Um, that God is love, that God is faithful, that God is good. Um, so that's what I encourage you to do as we finish tonight, just to spend some time in quietness yourself. Uh, with words or without words, just uh, just adoring God, just telling God um, how much you love God. So enjoy your time in God's presence. Grace and peace be with you.